Hello viewers, I am Dr. Rubiul. I teach pathology in a medical college hospital and I am making this video for my students and also for you. Hope someone finds this helpful. Today's topic is Hematology Lecture 2, Erythropoiesis. In this lecture, we will learn about the various stages of erythropoiesis. Recall from the first lecture of this series, we know that hematopoiesis is formation of blood cells and erythropoiesis is referring to the process of formation of erythrocytes or red blood cells. So, in this lecture, we will talk briefly about the various stages of erythropoiesis. Now, one thing you have to remember, all the blood cells have a common origin and that is from the hematopoietic stem cells and from those hematopoietic stem cells which are often referred to as pluripotent cells because of their potential to become differentiated in any type of blood cell. So from those hematopoietic stem cells we get multipotent progenitor. From those multipotent progenitor we get either lymphoid or myeloid precursors. So these are more committed cells and these are known as committed precursors. These are either of lymphoid or myeloid potential. Then from these committed precursors we get late precursors and ultimately from the late precursors we will get the mature forms of the blood cells that can be either red blood cells or erythrocytes or they can be granulocytes like neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil. They can be other cells like monocytes, platelets, etc. And often in your textbook you will get a term that is blast cell. And always remember, in fact, late precursor cells are those blast cells. And these are the earliest recognizable cells that we can recognize morphologically and say that these cells are going to produce this type of mature cell. So those are the late precursors. So the late precursors for red blood cells are known as erythroblasts. So we will talk about the various types of erythroblasts. And before talking about erythroblasts, we also have to talk about another cell that is known as pro-erythroblast or pro-normoblast. So let's talk about the various stages. So in this slide, we can see the various stages of erythropoiesis. Always remember, erythroid cells are arranged in the form of islands in the bone marrow. And the stages of erythropoiesis are pro-erythroblast, also known as pro-normoblast. Then from these cells, we get basophilic normoblast, which is also known as early normoblast. Then we get polychromatic normoblast, which is also known as intermediate normoblast. Then we get orthochromatic normoblast, which are also known as late normoblast. And ultimately, we get reticulocyte, and from those reticulocyte, mature red blood cells are formed. Now, before talking about their morphology, we have to remember one thing. This is often asked in your exam. What are the changes you will expect to occur during erythropoiesis? So during erythropoiesis, the cell size of the developing cells will gradually become smaller. So as we are progressing from pro-erythroblast to the next stage, then to the next stage, we will see that the cells are gradually becoming smaller. Another change that will happen during erythropoiesis is regarding the color of the cytoplasm. So initially, the color will be basophilic or bluish. But gradually, as there is formation of hemoglobin inside the cytoplasm, so gradually the color will shift from blue to pinkish in color and that is also known as eosinophilic in appearance. Another change that we will see during erythropoiesis is regarding the nucleus. So gradually the nucleus will become condensed and ultimately it will be expelled from the cell to produce non-nucleated reticulocyte and from that we will get the mature red blood cell. So now let's talk about the various stages of erythropoiesis. So the first one is known as pronormoblast or proerythroblast. So 
This is the earliest morphologically identifiable erythroid cell. The diameter is 15 to 20 micrometer and it will contain one or more nucleoli. The chromatin pattern will be fine and uniform and as I have already mentioned, the cytoplasm will be dark blue. The next stage is known as early normoblast or basophilic normoblast. These are smaller than the previous stage. The diameter is from 12 to 16 micrometer. They will have coarser nuclear chromatin and the cytoplasm is still deeply basophilic. The next stage is known as intermediate normoblast. Size is from 12 to 15 micrometer and here we will see chromatin plumping. And also you can see in this image that the cytoplasm will not be bluish. It will begin to show polychromatia. The next stage is known as late normoblast. The size will be from 8 to 12 micrometer. The nucleus will become condensed, which is often referred as pycnotic. And ultimately, it will be expelled in the next stage. So in this stage, it's still here. The nucleus is still here, but it is condensed. It is pycnotic and commonly it is eccentrically located. The chromatin is clumped and the cytoplasm is now pink in color. The next stage is known as reticulocyte. Nucleus is expelled from the late normoblast to form this reticulocyte, but it will still have remnants of ribosomal RNA. So it will have polychromatic color. Ultimately, the last stage is mature red blood cell and how this stage will form reticulocytes will shed their RNA and they will develop into the mature pink stained red blood cell after one to two days in the bone marrow and one to two days in the peripheral circulation.